Welcome, everyone, to Mythstery, a podcast about myths and history. My name is Bryant. I'm one of your hosts with my permanent guest, Cammie. Hey there, Cammie. Hey, Bryant. How are you? I am doing well. How are you? I'm well as well. <laughs> Excellent. Well, everyone, if you're just joining us, Mythstery is a podcast where each week we like to take a story or legend, give you that story, and then talk about some of the history behind it. And we've got some freaky stuff today. Ah, freaky. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah, it's out there. <laughs> right. So this is like a, a pretty encompassing topic, but we're we're going to talk a little bit about voodoo today. Specifically, we're going to hit the voodoo of like Louisiana voodoo because it's it's or New Orleans voodoo is what I should say, because it's it can get pretty specific depending on where you go. And uh, I knew just about as much as probably the most people did, most common people did, that, you know, it seems kind of fantastical, but it's really ingrained in it. And if, especially if you go to New Orleans today or at pretty much anywhere um, in that area, you'll see how important it is still today. So I, I know, Cami, this is something that you are really into or were really into before. Yeah, not like, you know how, not like practicing, but <laughs> sure, sure. Well, you know how I got into it? Oh, uh, no, a video game, oh, Gabriel really? Knight. Yeah, the first Gabriel Knight uh, game. Oh, it yeah. was based in New Orleans. Yep, that's really cool. What were, the, were those like computer games? Yeah, they were point and click adventures. Point -click style, yeah, yeah, that's for cool. a PC. That's super fun. And you're like, Jane yeah. Jensen did them, they were Sierra yeah. software. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I totally know that. Oh, it's funny too. Yeah, I think. I think like video games are where I kind of learn most about it. I like it was a you'd have like a class in some games like fantasy games and it would be like a witch doctor or voodoo doctor and it would be this like African elderly man and he would have like markings or like a skeleton, you know, like bones on him and he would have magic that would usually deal in uh, like necromancy, like bringing the dead or poisoning you and attacking you and stuff like that. So and while that is kind of um, like uh cornering it into a specific subject it's not super far off of what a lot of it's about but we're gonna go into it like i said this is specifically going on the new orleans voodoo and i'll i'll explain in my bit cami's gonna tell us a fun story um super fun and i'll kind of explain how encompassing voodoo is it's it's, it's real like just saying voodoo doesn't get you very far as far as like narrowing it down the subject of it so cami why don't you take it away Sure. So today we're I am talking about specifically Marie Laveau, who was the voodoo queen of New Orleans. I have two sources, uh, James Devalier, Marie Laveau, legendary voodoo queen, and Voodoo Queen, the Spirited Lives of Marie Laveau by Martha Ward. The voodoo queen of New Orleans began her practice to help free the slaves in the city and neighboring towns. She was a free woman herself and was said to be the daughter of a slave owner and his Haitian slave. She was a devout Catholic and was seen often attending mass in the San Luis Cathedral. On Sundays, the slaves of New Orleans were allowed to explore the city and attend mass. So it was a very busy day for Laveau. She would sell her Grigri bags to the slaves and free population alike and hold special voodoo services in Congo, Squ Congo Square. In her services, she would combine African religious practices of Voodoo with the European religious practices of Catholicism. This combination made New Orleans and American Voodoo differ from other Voodoo practices. The news of her particular talent spread to the wealthy whites of the city, and they came to her to help with legal and marital matters. It was in the muggy heat of late July that two such wealthy white men needed her help. They were accused of the murder of a slave named Mary, whose body was found in the most grisly state. The two men were tried and convicted to hanging by the neck until dead. Lavu was not a proponent of the death penalty, and she saw public hangings as particularly barbaric. The sun was at its highest point in the sky, completely clear, as the hangman readied his equipment. As the men were blindfolded, one of them cursed America. He was a Frenchman. The other remained silent. Both men's necks were placed in the ropes. In the distance, a figure appeared, and a great storm followed just behind her. 
It moved at her pace. She walked through the crowd, who parted as she drew near. The clouds encircled the sky above the square and drenched all who, were, who stood waiting. A bolt of lightning broke and split the sky like many fingers. The crack of thunder so loud it drowned the, san the sound of the wooden hangman's door. The two prisoners fell through the hole, but not to their deaths. Neither of their nooses held. They unwrapped neatly, and the men fell safely to the ground below. After the spectacle, the storm cleared just as quickly as it came, revealing Laveau standing before the gallows, the parted crowd on either side of her. The guards came quickly and grabbed the two men, placing them back in the nooses. They were then killed, but the story does have a happy ending. She had found a new purpose. The queen now visited death row prisoners, offering gumbo as their last meal and giving them spiritual counsel. That's really cool. I didn't know that the last meal thing. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, good. Yeah, that that's an excellent story that that really kind of touches on how complicated this this topic is, and it's exciting. This is like almost like a foreign religion, like when we talk or, or mythology, like when we talk about like Maori mythology or something like that. I, I had a yeah, I saw Moana, so I got that. That sure. just, but it's there's so much more there, and voodoo is is essentially an an encompassing way of talking about uh, specifically, you know, West Africa had has and had many varying tribes and territories, and the Atlantic slave trade that exploited that uh, imported uh, or exported exported those people. <laughs> against their will to new territories, mainly uh, the, Car Car the Caribbean area and uh, North America and South America, the, Amer the Americas. And when these cultures came or when these people came, they brought their cultures with them. And uh, when when you look into it, and I'll stop myself too because I always forgot about my sources. So uh, Wikipedia was a great place. They even have a, a series about um, – Afro-American uh, religion and the syncretism of it all. It's it's its, its own whole Wikipedia series, but history.com also helped me get a few things down. Neworleans.com is really good as well. They have some write-ups and frenchquarter.com as well. So I like that too, because my sources kind of show you just how encompassing this really is. Um, so th the many, you know, West, these nations, they, they were all very different. They all had similarities. It's, it's kind of almost like we've talked about Norse mythology and even like the ancient, ancient Greeks and how they had similar deities and practices, but it was unique to certain areas and things like that. And that's voodoo. Um, vo even the name voodoo, you, you mentioned, I think you said Vodun or Voodoo. Mm -hmm. Right. There's different ways to say it, and there there were different ways. And then after, like you get like um, the Creole uh, syncretic languages, like the French and Spanish, um, new the new dialects and languages that are formed by these by the new people that come um, that change it even further. So it's wild. Like you'll you'll even there will be there are nations in Africa, West Africa today that practice things that are similar to what was practiced. Uh, like in this time period of the 1700s, but date further back. Um, and they're practicing that today, but it's different than what merged with like Catholicism, Christianity, or even just m changed coming to America. So there, this is this, this, my little explanation here. I, I want you to just kind of gather sort of how voodoo, how syncretism, that was like a big word that was really merged, uh, how, how this all came about here. And so, yeah, Louisiana, that's where New Orleans is. Um, it was sort of originally a French colony. It goes back to 1682 by this explorer, Robert Cavalier de La Salle. Um, he named it Louisiana in honor of King Louis uh, the 14th. And it was a part of New France and eventually was, was sold to America in 1803. Um, as the like French was, they were hemorrhaging their territories during this whole age of exploration and uh, the early 19th century and stuff like that. So, but before they, they left and before their territory wasn't theirs anymore and, and was given to uh, like the Spanish and, and Americans mainly, they totally had an impression uh, other than just the names, their whole cultures w was embodied in it. And the French were 
devout Catholics, uh, mainly at the time, and they definitely used and abused slaves. And Haiti is one of the most notable things. It was a Caribbean uh, island, St. Domingue, or I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, that was uh, one of their most lucrative Caribbean uh sugar plantations and the Haitian revolution was a huge part of that. It was uh, probably, it's funny too, cause I was kind of just doing a quick read up on the Haitian revolution. I, I know the, the gist of it, but it, it was Wikipedia kind of calls it the most successful slave revolt um, since Spartacus. And oh, wow. I was like, wow, you're right. Uh, that's, that makes a lot of sense. So um, yeah, and the Haitian Revolution was 1791 to 1793. So 1682, the French are establishing themselves. Uh, they're, bring, they're bringing in slaves to to the mainland, to the, Amer the, the North American hemisphere, and also to the Caribbean. So even from the people, both slaves and freed, that were established on North America and the, the people of St. Domingue or to be Haiti – all, already these different cultures were forming, but even after the Haitian Revolution, people flee to the North America and a lot of them went to familiar places. You know, um, many of them spoke French because I, I, they either spoke French and their uh, in, indigenous language or just French, that kind of thing. So it made sense. So there's this this tight knit community and but they, it's it's wild, too, because they still had so many like once you leave your colony or your, your your original territory to the colonies, that for generations now, again, we're, we're coming up on 200 years after the original French colonies, these whole new identities are forming. And that's where you run into to people like Marie Laveau, who are really fascinating. So she was born in uh, probably 1801 and, and died around 1881. And she's basically the embodiment of this syncretic culture she was born free and uh, you could tell from her name marie laveau that's french at its core especially marie um she was devout catholic she also though uh was someone who was it was very the 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 culture of her of generations of families were ingrained in her as well and so there's this this combination of of voodoo of of a natural religion from those people but also what she knows here so uh she was born to partially free parents um it's it's a believed it, a lot of her life isn't super well known it's it's I, it's a lot of speculation but um the french legacy was definitely um really deep and uh voodoo had been in new orleans in, since the early 1700s um like I said, the slaves had been in green for, for years, and this new voodoo Catholicism uh, hybrid was really set in stone by the time she was around. And, and they would kind of call it New Orleans voodoo. And that's like if you go to if Haitian voodoo, West African voodoo, even like Mississippi, you go to Mississippi where they are practicing voodoo, it's, it's, it differs. The, the, the references to who they kind of worship and things like that, it changes. Um, uh, like uh, here's a little quote from Wikipedia in New Orleans, Legba, the voodoo deity who controls the gates of the spirit world, be became Saint Peter, who holds the keys to the gates of heaven. So it's this thing like we've talked about in in um, Roman and, and Norse episodes. Like Romans would look at the barbarians and their their Norse gods and be like, oh, that's Hercules, that that guy Thor, he's you know, or is Mars or something like that. They'll they'll kind of equate it. So that's what a lot of in in some cases that's what happened here. So, but even the voodoo, like who they practice to, would differ just between voodoo and Vodun and different sects and just different area and things like that. So, but, but Laveau was definitely one of the most important ones and is and is still incredibly. I, I I think you said she was the queen of like New Orleans voodoo. I like feel like she still is. I don't know who else would really kind of get her. But um, wait, do she, you talk about that? Huh? How people believe she's still alive? Um, people believe she's still alive, and even even if they don't, they her grave is incredibly it's if like hugely famous. Um, her graveyard is. Um, I didn't see too much. I did see that people like the the afterlife is a strange subject in voodoo. It can differ. I mean, it's all really it's it, it can be like personalized in a lot of ways too. Well, um, she do you get into her daughter? No. Okay, I know she so had two kids that 
lived on for some time, but I think she outlived them as well. Well, here's the thing. So yeah. it was like all of a sudden one day, this, it was Marie Laveau, same name, same accent, whatever, mm -hmm. just really young, comes in and starts practicing voodoo, and the old Marie Laveau is gone. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's probably her daughter, right? But like people that that was oh, able wow. to keep her legacy going yeah like she really must be the voodoo queen here she is she's taken a youth potion or something and made herself oh, yeah. younger and so she practiced you know for a hundred years when she only lived for 80 or whatever yeah that's cool that's really yeah. cool yeah she she really did make it something more influential than before i feel like i i don't know who, there, there, it doesn't seem like there was really any other, unless you really dive deep, that that brought it to the point of she did she she sold voodoo dolls, potions, the gri gri bags, which you know like can you kind of explain what a gri gri bag is? Sure, it's similar to like how Christians would wear maybe a cross or something for protection or right. a, a saint um, pendant or something like that. But what you do is you fill it with different things. I mean, it could be animal bones or it could be something benign um mm -hmm. and like some sort of food item or something and you seal it up with the intent that you have for it so if your intent is success then you intend success to it it doesn't right. really matter what's in the bag what matters is your intent right yeah that's that's what a lot of it really is yeah it's it's the meaning to you and i'll talk about a couple other figures because there's there's two others that are really important but um, even like some of it's reported to some of these like other figures that were really notable, even sort of apparently admitted that they were basically fooling people. But it, it you think of the placebo effect and if it works, it works. You know, uh, it, it was funny. I did see like, I mean, she, she, Loa was incredibly talented. She in a natural, like homeopathy, um, nature naturopath is what they kind of like so she she was familiar with the natural ways to kind of heal people again this is the 1800s so the first time you go to the doctor and say hey i have a headache he's gonna be like let's 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 spill some blood in a bucket for half an hour how does, how does right. that sound maybe if i um, cut off your head it will yeah uh, <laughs> cure here's it. some cocaine i'm gonna stab <laughs> you i promise this is gonna be good but she would use you know like god we live in south carolina it gets humid enough here it's not so different in new orleans uh, malaria, yellow fever, all these problems. She, that's going to be a lot better than just you know shanking a dude for half an hour and seeing how it goes. Uh, so, so she did. She she was also a hairdresser, and not just. I mean, she 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 had inf She knew influential people. She was influential. She had wealth. She like she. Uh, it, it was reported that she even had slaves in her kind of plantation. Yeah, I saw that too. Right, but either way, I mean, but she 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 helped. So many people. She she adopted people or or adopted orphans, fed the hungry, visited prisoners. Like like in your story, is really doing well. So she really went out there, and again, she died right at the end of the nineteenth century. And the the two other figures, Doctor John and and Fred Statton, are kind of the next big figures that are mentioned in sort of the mainline figures of New Orleans. Um, and Dr. John, um, he's really important. He's also known as um, Bio John, Prince John, Bayou John, Prince John, um, and also Papa John. Um, he was someone who was uh, brought from Senegal to New Orleans in the 19th century, in the late 19th century. So he, where, where Laveau was you know, born American, um, Dr. John w wasn't, he, he really had a firsthand, he was, he, he was the zero generation, you know, coming in. So he really had, um, a huge connection to this in this time period. So, uh, through Dr. John's work, um, in medicinal aspects, he gained a reputation similar to Laveau for being a healer, um, and it was even like, they kind of he apparently saved people who were on the verge of death. So this is kind of the idea of reanimation where someone was so close to dying and they didn't die. But for some people, it was, oh, he died. And then he brought him back, that kind of thing. So these um, the the mythology of zombies kind of originates here in Louisiana with spoiler Dr. for our Friday episode. <laughs> so. Um, 
Uh, oh yeah, and so it was Dr. John. So it's reported that yeah, he um, uh, it, it has been reported that Dr. John confessed to his friends that he was a, his magic was a sham, and uh, he had been known to laugh. Um, this writer for uh, Robert Talent wrote when he told of selling a gull- gullible white woman a small jar of starch and water for five dollars, which is a lot of money back then. So I don't know uh, Robert Talent in Voodoo in New Orleans. This is a 1946 piece book. Um, so I, again, I think it's one of those things like it, it, maybe Dr. John was making a couple extra bucks on the side. It, either way, his influence on New Orleans and voodoo culture is huge. Now, getting into the 20th century, though, you really do see – and I, I, I see an allusion to Mothman here. We had a Mothman episode. It's, it's great. Um, check it out. And it, it basically, the, the similarity is the commercialization <laughs> of this – and how it kind of transforms it. And like we talked about in Mothman, the whole point of Mothman is terrible things happen after this dude's around. Mothman's not going around punching people, um, but bad things happen. Go He's watch the it. harbinger of right. doom or whatever. And so it's kind of odd that like he's like a pop cultural icon now. But there's but it, the voodoo subject though goes so much deeper because it, it is so ingrained in in the culture it, it's its own like it's its own religion you know the the catholic voodoo the new orleans voodoo is the religion for many people and so regardless of like what they were what what they believed it it had such a hold it reminds me of the um, like the irish conversion from the the native like celtic and britonic things to the, the modern kind of Christian. So the next guy, uh, Fred Statton, he, he's the big guy from the 20th century. Born in 1937 in Haiti, Fred Statton moved with his family to New Orleans when he was an infant. Um, he was raised by his grandparents who were also of Haitian descent. So again, these connections that are there, the French Quarter connection. Um, his grandfather was a practicing Baptist minister. So again, you have the Christian influence as well. Uh, when Fred was young, his grandparents told him that he was of royal African descent and had supernatural abilities. That's 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 a lot different from the "Hey, you're adopted" talk. Um, right. His true name was revealed to be Prince K. Iyama. Papa John Bayou taught him the ways of Haitian voodoo. So, regardless of Bayou or Papa John saying, "Hey, I'm not. I'm a fraud," he did teach Fred Staten, and and Fred Staten kind of did the same thing. Fred Staten, though, um, especially by the 70s when he'd really settled, permanently settled in New Orleans, he had a, a total act, um, act like, and and specifically had that, that was all about God and voodoo. And he would like bite the head off a chicken, drink its blood, do crazy stuff. Um, and he was vers- worshipped as a voodoo priest until his mysterious death in early 1998. Uh, and his ashes- 1998? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he Not, was born in 37. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he was born in 1937. Um, I don't know, I don't think I wrote down when Dr. John died, my mistake. Um, it's okay. He must have been young when he came to America, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, late 19th century New Orleans. Oh, I should have popped that in. I'm sorry. But anyway, so Staten, he was sort of one of the last major figures of it all regarding the, the specific new orleans voodoo but it still lives on today like i said the the websites i've mentioned there are tons and tons of festivals and it's it's not just its own it's not just voodoo it's it's voodoo and catholicism voodoo and church and these the the syncretism between the two religions i guess you could say and cultures really mixed up and made something incredibly unique it's it's really wild um but yeah that's that's kind of it like i you know uh, I always knew the, the French had a really early presence. That's pretty obvious. They left, but the, not just the Frenchness of it all stayed, but the African slaves and their descendants totally took it on a whole new level. And it, it's I really like to see not just that and read about that, but the fact that like there's a whole page on New Orleans voodoo and Haitian voodoo and Mississippi voodoo and West African voodoo and it and so it's 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 almost like how complicated Christianity when you think of like someone who's Catholic and someone who's Baptist you know there's like so some many kind of Protestant yeah right 
So yeah, that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. I, I didn't want to go like too crazy into so many things because when I was reading and researching, it talked about some of the voodoo gods and deities. Mm -hmm. And the Loa. We, we to yeah, yes, we totally gotta do an episode on some of these um crazy. Oh, they are so peoples. interesting, yes. Yeah. So Very and I know so. something I, I I if two weeks ago if you asked me to name a friend or um a voodoo god, I'd be like <laughs> Yeah, uh what? So anyway, that's that's it in a nutshell. Cammy, thank you so much for covering Marie Laveau. She's really cool. I, I didn't really cite it in here, but there, there's some cool YouTube videos that you can check that talk about her as well. She's, she's a really well-respected um, thing. And also uh, one some of the – I got most of my stuff from her from Wikipedia, but Wikipedia got most of its stuff from Carolyn Morrow, Morrow, Carolyn Morrow Long's book, A New Orleans Voodoo – priestess the legend and reality of marie laveau it's a 2018 book it looks really cool i'll i'll see if i can rent it for free through my library app but if you need some further reading or watching just look check out marie laveau she's definitely one of the bigger subjects and she lived an extremely awesome life especially in 1801 to 1881 can you believe that like going through the civil war wow yeah i mean just like so and i don't did people live that long back then I that's a, yeah I'm, I mean like I feel like you're 12 and you're like oh he's <laughs> he's gonna be a goner soon so yeah if she if she, if she really made it yeah to, if you're not married 80, by like 15 you're like a like, spinster <laughs> yeah grandma um exactly so yeah if she made it to 80 then one that's no surprise probably to everyone who's like yeah oh and even before I I'll leave everyone with one last thing that I just wrote uh <laughs> The band, the Misfits, metal band, maybe. I think they're a punk. Yeah, they're a punk band. There yeah. you go. Um, the Misfits apparently tried to exhume her from her tomb in 1982. That's not good. You can visit her tomb and like. There That's was a why thing, you like, don't know who the Misfits are. <laughs> write an X. Yeah, write an X on her and like make a wish. You and spin, you spin but... around three times. Yeah, and then yeah. It, once it's. Once you, once the wish happens, once it comes true, then you circle the X to show people. That's right. Um, her, 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 her tomb is marked with X's and it's been vandalized. I, I don't, I believe that it doesn't have open access now. I think you, it's, it's not as open as it was before because of the vandalism and things like that. So, but well, the San Luis Cemetery number two is like extremely dangerous yeah. too. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's that's voodoo in a nutshell, and I definitely think we'll be coming back to that, maybe even October. That I think that'd be really cool to talk about some of the deities. Yeah, we should definitely do that. That culture and some of the more nuances between the different versions of it all. Uh, but thank you again, Cammy, for your lovely story. I really thank appreciate you, Brian. it. Um, everyone, thanks for listening. Let us know what you think, and if you know anything about voodoo. Um, remember, Facebook's our Facebook group is a great way to interact with us. We also are on Twitter and Reddit, and you can watch this on YouTube. You can see my bald head and Cami's beautiful face on YouTube right now. I think that's about it. Oh, I I do want to mention too. If you ever, I, I you know, Cami and I, we we love myths and history that's why we're doing the show we're not experts we just have like we have some academic experience in this kind of but it, this is really just like a personal thing that we really love doing if you ever think that if you are an expert if you think you're an expert and you think we missed an important detail let us know i would totally be happy to like mention that in the next show that yeah absolutely jojo jo said we didn't talk enough about something so jojo <laughs> let me know what you think uh, but yeah i think that's it Cammy, thanks again. Thank you.